The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he listed the tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they were treated, they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it's wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, in the first parable today from Isaiah, we hear a condensed history of the chosen people. Like the garden of Eden, this vineyard is tended lovingly by God. Its choicest vines, fertile and full of life. But like Eden, when it yielded, what it yielded was from outside the goodness of creation. It yielded sour grapes. Isaiah proclaims that the Lord will take away its protection. He will take away its life-giving rain and its tender care. Though we know that God has forgiven the chosen people again and again, Isaiah's role as a prophet demands he focus the people's attention on their sinfulness. The second parable that I've just proclaimed in today's gospel, told by Jesus to the chief priests, uses the same setting. So no doubt the chief priests recalled the passage from Isaiah as Jesus told the new story. They are quick to judge the greedy, envious tenants, but they fail to make the connection of their role in the parable. So too may we, especially when we persist on putting our own self-interests before God and before our friends. As in the parable immediately preceding this one, actually that's the one we heard last Sunday, God entrusts the vineyard, the kingdom, to those who do the work and produce fruit. 
The new Israel, the people of God, is the church founded and instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the stone that the builders rejected and has become the cornerstone. We, his church, the people of God, are expected to bear fruits of holiness and virtues, to carry out whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, pure, lovely, and gracious, as Paul has told us in today's second reading. And this idea is beautifully summarized in the gospel acclamation. We are told in that acclamation, I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit. We are all sent out to bear fruit. My dear friends, the vineyard is our world today. The vineyard is our society. It's rich with abundant blessings. And within this vineyard is the most precious gift of all, the gift of human life. On this Respect Life Sunday, we are called to renew our commitment to life, especially the lives of the most vulnerable members of our society. Human beings never lose their God-given dignity, no matter what stage of development they are at, right from conception till natural death. Our challenge, my dear friends, is to care for all human life. And our Respect Life Ministry has organized a, a rosary larry at our Hampstead Village Gazebo next Saturday. All are welcome. But as you go, because it's an outdoor event in the public square, please take all the precautions necessary. Don't take chances. Wear your masks, sanitize, bring your lawn chair. Try to be safe. Finally, my dear friends, let us look at the different perspective from this parable. The actions of the tenants seem a little odd. There is no reason for them to feel threatened or being envious of the sun and the air. Do they really think that if they kill the son of the vineyard's owner, they will become heirs of, to the property in his place? This is not the way inheritance works. Yet there is something familiar about the senseless actions of these tenants we have read about in the gospel. Sometimes, don't we act as if by rejecting God, we will inherit the world? Don't we at times reject the message of Jesus in the insane hope of being able to live by our own rules? The idea that a violent rejection of God can turn us from servants into masters is perhaps more common than we might think. But dear friends, the fact remains that we are tenants in the vineyard that belongs to God. We must live with the intentional awareness of the many, many blessings God gives us. All the fruit that we bear in this life belongs to God because ultimately it comes from God, who is the source of all good things. If we, as God's servants, give up the delusion of being own masters and hold fast to what is true and honorable, to what is just and pure, lovely and gracious, then we will discover 
that God is not an angry taskmaster calling us to account, but the God of peace, who St. Paul tells us in today's second reading, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is what Paul has told us, that if you do those things that are worthy of praise, true and honorable, just and pure, lovely and gracious, the peace of God will be with you.